in some sense, you know, we're here talking about, um, uh, again, aggressive lymphomas and, uh, and ALL, but in some ways, you know, our experience at Penn, which really resulted in those early, just absolutely spectacular, uh, you know, advances uh, that were reported in, in, in New England Journal of Medicine and other places, started with low-grade lymphoma and CLO. So CLO. Can, you, can you kind yeah. of circle back to that now? Yeah. Um, well, the very first experiences were ALO, but um, CLO was the next uh, uh, group of patients that were treated, and it was just a small um, um, study. But um, and again, efficacy was shown, and uh, the way I, I, I see it, if I'm looking at every at all the lymphoid malignancies, the best results we get in ALL, 75, 80 percent remissions. To our, and when I say remissions, I mean of some duration, not just a a blip. Um, second would be low-grade lymphoma, follicular lymphoma specifically. I can't generalize to low-grade, haven't done enough other ones, but so I'd say, and there it's 70 percent. Large cell lymphoma, it's between 40 and 50, okay, and then CL is about 30, about a third mm -hmm. successful. So, the, so why is that? Are the T cells that we generate the products from different in those patients? Is it uh, um, you know, what is the mechanism uh, by which different uh, lymphoid malignancies that are CD19 expressing have different susceptibilities or success rates with this form of therapy? So one of the things we've uh, observed both in the lab and then moved to the clinic at, at Penn is that, um, is that the kinase inhibitor, uh, the BTK inhibitor, ibrutinib, has off-target effects on T cells, shifts their their uh, um, cytokine profile in, in such a way that uh, they're more polarized towards uh, Th1. So we actually um, are conducting a trial in CLL patients that are being treated with ibrutinib that have less than a partial response after six months, they're eligible for the study, or if they have very adverse cytogenetics and, a, and a, uh, adverse history, uh, are eligible for that study. And the early results look great. So we may be able to go much beyond 33%, you know, by by using a combination strategy with uh, with ibrutinib, there, um, you know, in the first eleven patients, I, I think nine of them were MRD negative. So, so the other, I think, the other thing to think about is that uh, when we think about the patient's T cells, especially since we're we're transducing patient T cells to make CAR T cells, you know, we know from the, you know, I think that the multiple groups that that cells can be uh, what we call exhausted or you know be in various stages. And we know that in the setting of solid tumors that the checkpoint inhibitors can overcome this exhaustion. So one of the possibilities is to combine CAR T cell therapy with, with checkpoint inhibition. You want to talk uh, about this? Uh, yeah, I'll call your attention to an abstract. It's a, pre a preliminary um, um, that's going to be presented at this meeting by uh, one of our fellows. So, and we've used the strategy of rescuing uh, patients that are having progressive disease during uh, the early phases of CAR T cell therapy while there's actually expansion of T cells in the blood. Interestingly, what we've seen is we see expansion in patients that respond and expansion in patients that fail. And um, in, in the stuff that we're, that, that, that we're publishing now, we've not been able to distinguish by looking at the rate of proliferation somebody who's going to respond and somebody who's not. And this may be different than others' experience, but our, our data will speak for themselves. Anyway, um, uh, those patients we began to employ checkpoint inhibitors in initially off trial and after some very interesting results. One uh, anecdote which was published last December in Blood, um, we saw that uh, at a patient who during the early phases of, of CAR T cell therapy was having an expansion of CAR cells that were taking on a progressively exhausted phenotype was uh, that patient was treated during progression with pembrolizumab and uh, and what we were able to see is, is basically a reversal of the phenotype and logarithmic expansion of the CAR cells. So it's possible that in some patients who are failing because of T cell exhaustion uh, that uh, you can reverse uh, the process with a checkpoint inhibitor. And in the cases where uh, patients are treated early with a checkpoint inhibitor, you actually have enough CAR cells in the blood that you can do very expansive phenotyping um, and, um, because the, there's a lot of cells. We've treated patients later, you know, a month later, two months later, where there's less cells um, present. And there you can see changes in the populations using um, quantitative PCR, but you can't get the expanded phenotyping. So we're working on some technical uh, approaches to, in those patients with lesser numbers of circulating cells to be able to characterize the phenotype. I mean, it doesn't work in 100% of patients, and, and, we're, and what we're showing now is the most preliminary stuff. But I hope... Uh, soon to have a lot more information.
Fascinating. There are going to be results reported at this meeting of the combination of Axacel and atezolizumab, and I can tell you in a completely different context, our, our, we have a, a study in our institution where exitinib, an anti-angiogenic uh, 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 drug, is being t uh, combined with pembrolizumab, and, and in that setting and other settings, uh, surrogates like PDL1 expression in the tumor microenvironment and PD1 expression and markers of exhaustion in the T cells can predict outcomes. And I think that we're going to see more of those correlates, I think, between right. pathological yep. uh, outcomes, T cell phenotypes, mm -hmm. and, and then you know these more well, rational I, I think it highlights the, the, the issue that not all T cells are the same, number one. Number two, the interaction of the T cell with the microenvironment, we don't understand. And there are many ways to potentially manipulate that.